what is up my lemon slices and welcome back to the lemonade stand or welcome if you're new here my name is brianna i'm a certified personal trainer a big huge biology nerd and a registered dietitian to be last couple of videos you guys have missed the ding because i had to go into a little quick explanation about the fact that i'm not alluding to being a dietitian because somebody said i was in a video a couple weeks ago even though i add to be to the end of it so yeah i'm still in school to be a dietitian Almost done. We're gathered here today for another episode of me reacting to and critiquing beach body workouts while I educate you in the process. Before we proceed, if you love science-based health, wellness, and fitness education with some lols and lots of dry sarcasm along the way, hit that subscribe button and join the lemonade stand. I would truly love to have you here. Without further ado, let's make lemonade. Mm -mm. Okay, so this first one, if you're a long time viewer of this series, this one might actually look familiar to you because um, I think I have featured it before a while ago, like probably in a video last year, because it's one that's so ridiculous that it never ceases to amaze me for how stupid it is. All right, so we just watched something. The caption says, um, wow. Just finished the free workout and my arms are jello. The thing that I can't remember is which program this one is from. I want to say 645, but I'm not sure that could be wrong. If you know, drop a comment below and let me know. All right, so I'm just gonna, let's watch this again and try and figure out what's happening. She's kind of, she's not really, we see, we can't really see her feet. So I don't know if she's standing on that front leg. It kind of looks like she just kind of is step, has one leg step back and the other one forward and she's, Oh wait, actually she might be standing on that leg and the back leg is hovering. One hand is down at her, at her side, kind of in front of her like this. I don't really know what that is. And then the other hand has a dumbbell and then she's kind of dragging it up. I don't know if that's supposed to be a row. This looks really ridiculous. I don't know if that's a row. And the reason I say I don't know is because she's not really bending over like at all. And with, you know, when you're doing a row, you wanna be bending over more because you want to emphasize your back. Otherwise you're, um, if you're standing too like upright, it's not gonna do anything for your back. It could also be an upright row, which is um, more target your, um, your <sighs> rear deltoids and like your traps and your upper back. But if that's an upright row, I don't really, why is she holding the weight? Like she's like moving it off to the side like that. I don't know, man, that looks weird. What do you think, Alpha? I was down there licking her feet. She's a cute little piggy. As is the norm for a lot of these workouts developed by these super trainers, I have no idea what's going on. I do remember the last time we saw this, um, the person was like kind of more standing on one leg and they were more like actually like tipped on that front leg that was supporting them. Um, this one just looks like she might just be kind of stepped back. I don't know, maybe that's a modification like for people who have a hard time balancing. Whatever the case may be, I still think that kind of standing on one leg stuff is pointless. It's not doing anything other than making this exercise more cumbersome and just annoying. I think this one is a really good example of just a silly social media exercise that's hard just to be hard to make you feel like you're doing something, but really you're not, you're just doing hard things. You could actually do something that's a lot more simple than this, that's actually like doing something, <laughs> like doing something, I guess like, doing something in terms of like physical fitness and is not just wasting time. So yeah, let's do that. Here is an exercise that's not stupid. Hey, you two, you two are in the way. So now you're just gonna act like you can't hear me? Really? Zeus, you two, come here. Okay, good job. Yeah, you can sit right there. Because I get a lot of questions about my outfit whenever I do these. Um, leggings, Lululemon. My leggings are almost always from Lululemon and this bra is actually from Aerie. I really like these. They're extremely comfortable and supportive. And the back is cool. Okay, enough playtime. I'm grabbing a set of very lightweight dumbbells. These are five pounds. I'm showing you first how to do upright rows. Now upright rows have proven themselves to be a controversial exercise because of the potential to cause something called shoulder impingement, which is basically putting your shoulder joint in a compromising position, then training it with resistance using heavy weight. I know a lot of fitness trainers who never have clients do them. Some only have clients do them with uh, very light weight. It's really kind of a case by case. And also, you know, if you have shoulder 
issues and it's probably best that you don't even do these at all. That's just my opinion and recommendation. I personally do not have clients do upright rows, but I will occasionally do them for myself. The reason I'm showing you the upright rows is because you're an individual and I can't stop you from doing them if you want to, but please do them right. A really common mistake I see people make when doing upright rows is bringing the weight too high. You don't need to go super high with upright rows. In fact, going too high contributes to that potential for shoulder damage. As you can see, I'm going what I like to call boob height, which is super professional terminology. You do not need to jerk the weight all the way up to your chin. I see a lot of people do that. So I can't stop you from doing upright rows, but if you're gonna do them, could you just do me a solid and do them right, please? So next I'm showing you guys regular bent over row. I've shown this one time and time again. Rowing is a tried and true exercise. Great for putting emphasis on the lats. Keep your elbows in as you pull the weight in towards your navel and pinch your shoulder blades together at the top. Simple and effective. All right, next up we have that chick. I'm gonna blur her, but um, this is this does happen to be that chick that uh, dubbed me the little negative Nancy on the internet. If uh, you saw that video, then you know. You guys know me. I'm just a girl on the internet. For the first two microseconds of this, I thought this started out pretty normal. It just looked at first like a single leg RDL, Romanian deadlift, but then it went into a, I guess a glute kickback. Like I wanna say a glute kickback. I don't really know. If you take out the kickback thing that she did, this is actually a normal exercise that humans do sometimes. When single leg RDL is done right, it's uh, you know just a way to isolate um, one hamstring at a time. However, a lot of people, myself included, have a tough time balancing with these. So one option is that you can do it holding a weight in front of you that's secured to something so that you don't have to um, like worry about busting your butt. I'll show you what I mean in a second. Um, I don't really find that extra kickback stuff to be useful. You the super trainer who developed this exercise, I don't know who because I don't know which program this one's from either. You who developed this monstrosity took a perfectly normal exercise and you made it weird and awkward. Like a first date with the guy you're now married to. All right, so something that I just wanted to do just because I like doing it is reading captions and she has a really long caption down here. How someone shows up for a workout truly says a lot about a person. Are you someone who will skip reps because no one is watching? Or are you someone who is going to do a workout to completion because you know that you would know if you skipped reps? Are you someone who will not pick up the heavier dumbbell because you just don't feel like it? Or are you someone who is going to grab that heavier set of dumbbells and push through the hard because you know that you can? Profound. So how about I show you guys an alternative that we actually do here on planet Earth? Here is just a better alternative to whatever that just was. So I realized that I had no way to safely show you guys what I wanted to show you at home. So I found this demo on YouTube on the channel Train FTW. So thanks to them, that's what I'm gonna show you right here and now. This is simple and short and exactly what I was talking about before. And I said to anchor your band to something sturdy to help you support yourself better. So he's using a band. I personally call these big giant bands power bands. We can tell he has it anchored to something sturdy. I'm guessing it's a squat rack that's directly in front of them. So when you're doing these, it does help to go slow and make sure you feel that stretch in the hamstring of the working leg. So as I was looking for this video, I came across another one uploaded by a channel titled Coach Alyssa Chang. This is another great alternative that I failed to mention in my video. It's essentially the same thing, but it's the version where you don't have to worry about balancing at all. It's just a staggered stance Romanian deadlift, or I also call it a split leg deadlift. She gives really good cues on screen here and gets straight to the point in this clip. I will link both of these videos below. So this next one that we're gonna take a look at has a similar theme to the last one, as in a Beachbody super trainer took a normal exercise and made it stupid and more annoying to do somehow. Also, this one's super short. It's like two seconds long, so I'm gonna let it play through a few times. On that note, I think it's time for an Oreo break. So this bag is the birthday cake Oreos, but there's only one birthday cake Oreo left. I'm going to eat it, obviously. And then I put one of the those new super sexy, like super stuffed Oreos with the cookies and cream in there. Okay, so I mean, what we just watched is someone doing a dumbbell rear delt raise, 
standing on one leg. <laughs> what is the point of that? I think this is just what fitness influencers do. And I mean, I guess I would personally consider Beachbody Super Trainers like to be fitness influencers. They take a normal functional exercise and in an effort to make it more unique and eye-catching, they do some shit like this. I think maybe if I were to ask one of them to their face, their defense would be something like, oh, well, we're trying to train balance. That's a thing. Balance training is a thing, especially maybe for people in physical therapy for certain like lower body things. I'm not a physical therapist, so I don't know for sure. I've done physical therapy. So I'm just speaking from my own experience. But if you're wanting to train balance, there are a lot of ways to do it that don't just feel like a complete complete nuisance in that don't impede on an otherwise normal and functional exercise. Like you could use a BOSU ball the right way. You could use a stability ball against a wall, like for some wall balancing drills. There are a lot of options. And if anyone's watching this, uh, who happens to be a physical therapist, I'm sure you know a whole lot. When I was in physical therapy for my Achilles tendonitis last year, I did um, balancing exercises to strengthen my, um, my ankles. And uh, those exercises were not stupid. I don't even have a demo for this one because I don't feel like I need one. Do a rear delt raise on both of your feet like a normal person. Next one. So this one is weird, but I feel like I get it, kind of. Walking lunge, but back foot being brought in like every other step or something. Weights that size so close to her little toes is making me so nervous. So despite the fact that just looking at this is making my knees crunch, I feel like I get it, but I would personally recommend, and I guess personally for myself, I would do this differently by separating the two components of this. I would do just a standard walking lunge, which I feel like is one component of this. And then I would do a narrow stance lunge, which I feel like is the other part of this. And for that narrow stance lunge, I would do it static, standing, staying in one place. I wouldn't like try and walk. So lunges are a fantastic, simple exercise. And they really do a great job at emphasizing your quadriceps, AKA your quads and your butt cheeks. The more mature amongst you might call them glutes. So with the lunge, the more you step out in front of you, the more you'll emphasize your glutes as well as your quads and the more narrow your stance. So the closer your feet are together when you're lunging, the more you'll emphasize your quads and you'll actually feel it less in your glutes. If you wanna get your glutes more involved in the party, you can do a lunge with your front foot elevated on something like a step box. There are so many uh, variations of lunges. They're a very versatile exercise. So in my opinion, this exercise is not inherently stupid, but I do think there's a better way to do it. I think in terms of this exercise, the narrow lunge and the walking lunge should get a divorce. They should split up. I just don't think they make a good mashup exercise like this. So I will show you how to separate them and then they'll be living their best lives separately. Also, in case I don't have to say it, lunges can really piss off your knees. I know some people who don't even lunge ever at all because it just bothers your knees so much and that's perfectly okay. You don't have to lunge, there's always an alternative. So if your knees don't like lunges, that's okay. Just sit this one out, get yourself an Oreo and we'll catch you on the next one. Okay, so time for lunges. These are really simple. Take a big step out in front of you, then slowly lower yourself down so that your knees are bent at a 90 degree angle. Then exhale as you press up through your front heel. Simple, effective, and not stupid. And here I'm showing you a narrow stance lunge. Getting your footing for these can be a little bit tricky, but here's a tip. You know you're getting the most out of your narrow lunge when you feel it most in your quads. Since we all obviously have different anatomy, getting your stance right will take some trial and error. I always have to kind of mess around with my feet before I do these. Once you get your stance right though, the same rules apply as a standard lunge. Next one. Okay, so I'm just realizing when I get these, I don't always read the on-screen caption just because I'm focused on um, like the exercise, but I'm noticing right now that um, it says on the screen, healthy obsession move of the day. So this is from the program, Healthy Obsession. I think I did a video about Healthy Obsession a couple months ago. Yeah. I just cannot tell you guys how much I cannot stand the name of that program. What kind of fitness expert, what kind of fitness professional period, uses the word obsession when naming a program. I just, I just, I'll never get over that. So this one was sent to me and it made me feel feelings. <laughs> My very first reaction to this exercise when I saw it was whiskey tango foxtrot Batman. But then it occurred to me that it is just jumping after all. The cornerstone of a lot of beach body slash body workouts is minimal 
to no equipment. If you wanna work out and all you have is your body, then you have to make that work, right? Now, would I have my clients do this weird jumping and then stepping back and then stepping forward and then jumping thing while awkwardly forcing a smile? No, I would not. I think there are better options that one can do that are more than just you jumping. But looking at this, this made me think of a grievance that I have with um, a lot of fitness people in social media and about how they demonize, about how a lot of fitness people that I even follow, I still like them, demonize burpees so much. My take on burpees is they are not the worst exercise in existence. They're not the worst thing that somebody can do. I follow a lot of fitness experts, actual experts and uh, professionals who I love and I really admire and they just constantly trash all over burpees. <laughs> and when I hear them do, the funny thing is I'm like, if you really think burpees are bad, you should, you should, sit there a beach body workout. <laughs> but the reason that I kind of, um, I mean, it doesn't bother me per se, you know, I'm not gonna make a, you know, I'm not gonna go on a rant about it in my story. But the reason I, I, it makes me feel some type of way is I feel like you have to meet people where they are. And a lot of people don't have any equipment and all they have is their body. If all somebody has is their body, you do have to get creative. Now I do admit that the line between creative and stupid sometimes can get blurred. In my opinion, as somebody who's been a personal trainer for a few years, but as far from a fitness expert, burpees are not the worst thing that somebody can do. And you know what? I've had clients before who actually kind of like doing burpees. I briefly questioned them to make sure that they were not a spree killer. They weren't. She was an at-home client and she had very minimal equipment. For my at-home client, like I always ask them to buy a few pieces of equipment. And one of those pieces of equipment is always a step box. And um, I showed her a variation of burpee with a step box. And she was like, um, I kind of like this. I think these are kind of fun. So every now and then I would give her a treat of uh, box burpees, that's what I call them. In addition to her functional standard resistance workouts. Whenever I see uh, fitness people in social media trash burpees, I think a lot of the grievance actually comes more from <laughs> rookie trainers who don't know what the f they're doing, like I once was, <laughs> and they just make their clients do burpees all the time just to make them do something that's difficult and challenging just for the sake of making them do hard things. That's not functional. It's not a functional physical fitness routine. That's just you making your client jump around because it's hard. Anyway, if I personally had the option between this and burpees, I would choose burpees. I think burpees are at least more fun and they're more versatile. And this chick, I mean, she's just, she's just jumping in the air. Like don't, that's not exciting. I mean, there's lots of things you could do instead of this. You could do jumping jacks. If your knees are all good, you could do uh, jump squats or tuck jumps. So I did just list several alternatives that you can do instead, but um, I feel like people are gonna wanna know what those box burpees look like. So um, how about I show those to you guys for the demo for this one. So here's a box burpee in case anyone's wondering or a box jump burpee, whatever I call it. So these are definitely not low impact. If you have issues of your lower joints, definitely sit this one out. Also, this is a step step box I'm using. It's just a standard um, aerobic step box. This is my version of something that is somehow more fun, but also slightly more tortuous than a burpee. I'm doing a burpee, but at the top I'm jumping onto the box and then returning back down with my hands while still on the box. Now I can't stop you from doing a fitness routine that only consists of burpee. I do hope your routine is more well-rounded and diverse than only burpees, but I'm not gonna trash you if you wanna do burpees occasionally. And here is a variation if you wanna try it. All right, here is the last one. Mm. Pink lemonade is good for the soul. So this is... What is this actually? Let's go back and watch it again. I'm putting it in slow motion on here. Okay, so a dumbbell in each hand, reverse lunge, cool. And then on that same leg that she just stepped back on, she's kind of bringing it up. I don't know if that's supposed to be a glute kickback. And then she's just repeating that on both sides. Okay, so like a reverse lunge with some kind of glute kick back or leg kickback. I don't know. I'm hesitant to call it a glute kickback. I'll explain why. So a reverse lunge, fine, whatever, sure. Again, lunges are extremely versatile. There's lots of ways to do a lunge. A glute kickback, also fine, but not great in this combination in my opinion. And I think the reason for that is because she's not really bending over very far to maximize that kickback. So when you're doing a glute kickback, to do the best possible kickback you can do, you have to bend over at your waist, like pretty much have your chest completely facing the floor, or you can be on your knees 
ways as well. If not, and you're standing too far upright, two things will probably happen. First thing, your kickback will probably suck and you will barely feel it in your glutes. And the second thing is, you might feel some pain and discomfort in your lower back. This lunge to kickback combination is making that glute kickback suck. And this girl is probably feeling this more in her lower back than she is in her glutes. And it's because when she's going to do the kickback, she's kind of standing a little bit too upright. She's not bending over far enough. If you separate these two things, they'll be all gravy. Also, I'm not sure what program this is from. Somebody wanna help me out with that? Not that it even really matters at this point. I mean, it's all beach body, body. Body, yaddy, yaddy. So I think for the demo here, I'm going to show you guys how to do a standing glute kickback the right way versus the wrong way. Don't mind me. I'm just getting the regular interruption by dogs. Onyx is such a freaking baby. If he sees us loving someone else, he has to come over to get some too. Okay, first I'm getting a chair to do this. You can use a chair, bench, wall, anything. Now I'm first showing you the wrong way to do a glute kickback, or I guess the not ideal way to do a kickback. I'm standing straight up and I'm trying to kick my leg back, but it's tougher because of my posture. And on top of that, it's really bothering my lower back. Now here's the ideal way to do a kickback. I've changed my posture by bending over and having my chest fully facing the floor. By doing it this way, I have a much wider range of motion. I feel it in my glute a lot more and my lower back is no longer in pain. In the conclusion, what else can I say that I haven't already said a thousand times before? Social media workouts that are released by people who were not actually like well-versed in fitness and well-educated in like exercise science and exercise physiology are very oftentimes stupid and dangerous. But you know what? Keeps me in business. <laughs> I think if I could give like a piece of just really sage sound, simple advice about things to keep in mind when you were putting together your workout, make sure they are safe, functional, practical, and enjoyable. Thank you, management. And actually, you know, I guess this is a subtle plug. I never, I never do this. In my most recent ebook release a couple months ago, it's titled How to Start Your Fitness Journey for Dum Dum. I actually talk in detail about how to put together your workout from picking a muscle group all the way to exercise selection. So subtle plug. My stuff is always linked below, but I never say it, but it's there if anybody's interested. All right. If you made it to this point, thank you very much. I appreciate it. Get yourself some pink lemonade and some Oreos. Thank you very, very much for watching. Like if you enjoyed this, hit the subscribe button if you'd like to see more similar videos, and I will see you guys in the next one. Queen Lemon, over and out. Did you guys hear Alpha snoring? She just stopped snoring. I must have woken her up when I was talking just now. Oh my goodness. Look at this little house hippo. Look at your little house hippo. Hey, baby. Hey. You have a good nappy? You're so sweet. You're so quiet and chill. Yes. Compared to her brother, she is just like, uh, she's just so quiet. She's just my precious little hippo. Yes, baby. You want to say bye? You want to say bye? I know. You got a hard life, don't you? You got a hard life. Yeah. Oh, that's a good stretch.